Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to Lego City Undercover. So, we rescued Natalie a second time, and now we're helicoptering to the next location. And she's going to bunk up with the lady. I, I don't even know what you would. I forget her name. Lady that's been giving us all the gadgets. So. So it looks like I know how to fly a helicopter then. And now I know that you have to switch off their engines after you land. I suppose I owe you an apology. I know you've been trying hmm. to protect me. I was just feel like Natalie about really has just become a you didn't mean to vapid during Rex's trial. love oh, interest right. and not so really a character. A well, I still wasn't happy about it. When I first met you, I trusted you completely. I I might have even had some feelings. So when you just left like that? Feelings? <laughs> Shut I up. I still hate these so necks. So, you like to see a movie sometime? <laughs> You're actually kind of sweet, Chase. But you're married to your job, and I don't date married men. How about coffee? Just find my dad, Chase. Tea? A tiny cookie? Ice cream? Ice cream. Vinny's meeting with Rex. Please don't have left the restaurant yet. So I don't mind that they did a bit of characterization there that, to get to, to have her not really just say, I, I love you, basically, and that's it. But really the only reason why they did have her reject him is because uh, they needed her out of the way for the rest of this game. So we got helicopter pads now, which will speed up moving around a little bit, but don't really help the open world experience by much, because you can't really scan while you're in the helicopters. Uh, so flying around only really makes sense if you really need to get to another area and there's not any other option. It also just kind of smacks in the face of the idea of having the trains and the fast traveling uh, because now you have this kind of open fast traveling system. The thing that's weird here is saying hold B to descend. I'm not even in the, uh, not even in the, the, the helicopter anymore. Um, so apparently there's 17 barbecue fires to extinguish. That they are placing these things very specifically in places where you you get the idea of oh there's a bunch more of these things to do, but without some kind of indicator, um, it really would be a nightmare scenario. So the lady who issues your equipment. In all realisticness, that lady would probably just be a a employee of a police department, a a actually kind of important employee, certainly. But it's not like she's designing the scanner and and installing the software. So so she's not like this computer genius that you might see in something like NCIS where. Where you have Abby as a character that is that supposed supposedly this hacker genius that is also doing all the scientific stuff. Um, so you have this problem of there being very few female characters and them being very unimportant to the story and not being very qualified or in, or capable. You have the the city mayor is a female character, but she disappears completely in the story. So, what can you really take from that? Not, not a lot. This is an actual red brick. Instant vehicles. What would instant vehicles do? That's like a fast travel thing. Alright, so... 
instant vehicles we can turn this on and I assume it just means that in the rare occasions where you uh, where you would have a vehicle show up for you that's now instantaneous so you see is there five more of these where could they be hmm That would be very odd that there would be five watering uh, fountains, water fountains, uh, in potentially this entire open world, but that's kind of what it feels like. We've got a clue here, we've got things here and here. Natalie is somewhere inside this building. Hmm. Some of the lines of dialogue that were written are like, did he hear me right? Uh, fall into a dangerous area of, of potentially hearing voices, you know? You, you want video game audio to, to be clear and concise and obvious that it's from a video game? You, you don't want, you don't want to, it to sound like, oh, am I just hearing whispers from auditory hallucinations and did he hear me right? Really feels more like, like many people who are already Sorry, in danger of potentially hearing auditory hallucinations uh, would get hear that and get freaked out and possibly then exacerbate their condition and or develop a condition I don't know exactly how that works but it, it seems like it's just bad writing in general even if you don't think of the bigger issue um, from what I've heard little kids typically do dream up slash hallucinate things rather frequently it's not something to be super concerned about until it becomes a major issue um, because it, it's fairly frequent to little kids kids that would be playing this Lego game um, again so that just kind of puts this as this is the one Lego game that is not really age-appropriate for its target audience um, yeah, monsters under the bed and things like that. That's that's all the same thing. Just a lack of an ability to tell reality from fantasy. Ow. Um, no, it really is an ability, not not like a condition or anything. There's another line. If this is the right seat, street, where's the building? Why would you have a character... Why would you tell a writer to write that line? Why would you have a character, just a random character, say that? And... If robbing the museum is like clearly a reference to an activity I did again if you're hearing voices they often are talking about things you're doing or personal uh, personal things nobody would know let's jump hey there, into Chase. this level benny has been telling me how you're his number one guy now don't worry I ain't jealous is he around hmm. he uh, said something about meeting some private buyer guy yeah to hmm. tell you the truth I'm a little worried that guy he's meeting, he used to run all the rackets in this city before he got put away. Now he's out, I just hope he ain't trying to cut Vinny out of the equation. You want me to make sure Vinny's okay? 
Then he would disown me if he knew I'd sent someone to look after him. Right. So he can't know. All I got mm -hmm. was that they were meeting outside in Paradise Sands. Get up somewhere high, and with a bit of luck, you'll be able to see them. Right. Thanks, Mo. No, thank you. So, we came to the ice cream parlor slash speakeasy. Uh, and now, now we talked, and now we have to go find somewhere else. Hi, the go. Which is not this big spiral. Leaning tower of Lego pieces, but not really. Alright. Let's see. Column points not too expensive to use the perks for. It's it's really just bad I a bad idea in general, frankly, to have the have the people randomly talking about events in the world. So if this is supposed to be instant cars, that's not instant by any means. So the only thing I could think other that would be instant is if they have nitro, their nitro refilling oh, instantaneously. Hmm. Which, no, it's not doing that either. So. Oops, went too far. Just run. It's easier to run, jump out of the car and run than it is to, to try and, uh, Turn a car around. What's yeah, you would have just wanted to have these people either make a large collection of randomized incidental things. Honey, interesting. This would be funny if this is Honey's parent company's Honey's parents' company. Uh, wouldn't that be weird if Honey's parents were the bad guys? Like, they, they've only been mentioned offhandedly as a joke in the entire game. But I feel wow. like Lego Marvel... So this is Frank's parents' hotel. They must be loaded. Mm. Right. I need to get mm. onto the rooftop. Yeah, the... It... Why are we going here? The, Ugh, this doesn't make minutes. story. I don't have five minutes. I guess I'll have to get up the hard way. I've lost the plot here. I I've totally lost the plot. We were going to Paradise Sands. Is this hotel Paradise Sands? How was I supposed to know that? I don't see anything on the walls that say Paradise Sands. Um, no, we, we needed to get somewhere high to search around Paradise Sands. So, we're just, we really needed a line of dialogue where he said in the conversation, I know, let's go to uh, Frank's parents' hotel. That's real tall, but then how would he even know that? It does kind of bring down the point that it seems like Chase kind of barely knows any of the police department in Lego City. I mean, he may have been gone for a while, but he, he shouldn't, he should, he should have some major familiarity with his co-workers, or maybe not, I mean, I don't know how much police really know of their other co-workers, but I would assume probably more than what's being shown here. So it went up once and then I needed to do some other things. Am I gonna have to fight this? Whoa there. If you ain't guy. a gym member, you ain't coming in here. I am a gym member. Of course you are. I bet you don't even know how to use that fitness equipment. 
So we're going to have to do each of these mini games, which we see a lot of these. Uh, but the bench pressing in particular is, is rather slow because you have to do five reps and all of it, is, all of this is just tapping B. And again, this is just tapping B, I believe. It's just always tapping B. Jeez, you play enough games like this and your B button on your controller would be worn out right. prematurely. I guess you must be a gym member. Even though I don't recognize you and you haven't provided any ID. Yeah, that's... That's about the level of comedy that... That I've... We're getting. It's not terrible. Uh, it's not a terrible joke, it's just kind of... Nothing. So, obviously we're going to unlock something at some point that would... Let us get over there. So is, that might be some kind of free run. Um, meanwhile, I'm not going to bother to do one more of those. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I changed my mind. Hmm. Yeah, for a Lego City undercover characterization, you would want some character to be the inventor of the genius gadgets. Uh, that is pretty typical in all depictions of police in, in TV and movies is that they have a ridiculous amount of CSI uh, type gadgets that frankly Rick, just don't really there, exist. Jay! Or don't work the way they say they hotel? work. No, I'm um, looking for Vinnie Papalardo and Rex Fury. <laughs> well, I can check the guest book. Th mm. That isn't good. Never mind. Have you seen anything suspicious happening from up here? No. Mm. He's uh, still apart got that horse. from the sinister-looking helicopter that flew overhead a few minutes ago and then landed on the building opposite the Herbert Hotel? The Herbert Hotel? Then that's where I'm going. Hey! What's hmm. wrong with my parents' hotel? Is this about that guest who ate the chocolate on his pillow and it turned out it was a cockroach? That's probably something that did happen at some point, but it's kind of also a bit of an urban myth. The, the fact that he brought the horse around makes me... I know they're trying to do a gag here, but the crude humor in this game has has happened enough that it makes me think Frank is just like uh, doing something very untoward with the horse and and having a romantic re relationship with him uh, like there really was no reason for the the horse to show up on this he that gag should have been done after they had done it They're, the idea of dragging a... Now I'm just gonna look at this, I'm just slowly falling CJ's. down. Um, the idea of doing jokes in threes or repeating jokes or taking it too far or taking, just taking it too long are all basically l concepts that are too complicated for the level of comedy you should be doing in a Lego game. It really should just be a one and done uh, pun based thing. And I screwed up. Uh, let's be. Hmm. Well, it helped me a little bit by resetting me. It also, that also goes to show you that we're in an instance right now and I can't just fly wherever I want. Wow. Repeated. So we kind of, even the game knows, like the, the game is clearly showing it knows that this chicken glide concept is not programmed well. All right. 
I think what I need to do is tap A and A and then just take my finger off of it. But my instinct is to tap A and then hold A because you are holding on to a chicken and no, that doesn't work. It says tap and hold A. Let's B to activate super chicken mode, which I think I already have. And then tap A and hold. Hmm. I'm pressing forward and that might be the problem. Hmm. Honestly, I, I'd prefer just to kind of fail this and and be able to reach up there, but it's not going to let me do that. Well, this is extra frustration for no reason. Right. So, A and then hold A. Press forward and then push forward as fast as possible. You can even see in the animation the chicken is just kind of flapping in an awkward right direction and I am pushing slightly to the left to, to what seems like adjust for that. Yeah, I feel like LEGO Marvel Super Heroes didn't have any bad guys making any sounds unless these sounds were actually taking you to some kind of event. Like, there, there were just rescue missions where, where an average citizen would be attacked by bad guys and you would hear them screaming help, help, or something like that. I think. Uh, it's been so long. Uh, but yeah kind of does feel like the randomness of this is weird and I don't know how GTA does it but I, I, I'm fairly certain even GTA doesn't have random characters saying random things uh, it gets annoying and repetitive very fast and there's really no way to get around that uh, yeah you, you, you can't really out program around that concept or out record around that concept because like the, the one thing you could possibly do is go a little bit sleazy and uh, have have people record their own voices to be in a video game for free and even then you would get wildly vastly different recording qualities in, in wildly vastly different rooms um, but even this game seems to have some of that it, they definitely weren't recording on the same day in the same booth with the same settings on some of the lines of dialogue so we're plugging up the fountains needed a line of dialogue I feel like previous Lego games have also done that where if it's even slightly confusing there, there should be either an indicator pointing towards what you're supposed to do or a line of dialogue or both telling you what you're supposed to do in that case a simple line of I need to clog up those pipes uh, which you could probably use a line like that in several different places like once at the very beginning of the game and once at the very end of the game and nobody would even remember that it was said twice um, or you could really at least use the dialogue in the open world missions later on we're running into a danger here of by the time uh, by the time we actually even start this next mission, we'll barely have enough time to, to finish it. No way! You're the guy who took my car and ruined our party! Oh, brother. Let's see, going 
capture this guy. I suppose it is nice that they don't have like a taser in this, but that that really would be a gag you would see in a Lego game is that you would have a guy that tasers people and then they they turn into skeletons. Um, yeah, much like CSI technology, the the effectiveness and usefulness of a taser has been overstated and misconstrued. Um, effectively, um, they they have the courts have ruled that you basically have to, if you taser anyone, have to take them to the hospital because they're at such a high chance of having a heart attack after that. Um, and we've seen kind of a decrease in the use of the taser and just a, a re-increase in reliance of, of using guns, often in scenarios when they're, they're, that's obsess excessive force. Uh, but yeah, CSI technology in particular. Fingerprints, big deal. Blood type matching, big deal when they were invented. DNA, often hogwash, depending on which which company is doing it. Uh, the police literally just tell them what results they want to get, and they return the results that they want. Um, that their DNA does exist and could be tested, certainly, but it's it's not super accurate. It's not 100% accurate, uh, for sure. Um, a lot of the other things that police claim to suspects that they have done, they haven't done because it just takes too long. Uh, DNA, to get like real DNA uh, results would take a lot longer and actually cost money where it's easier for the police just to lie to you and say that your DNA matched or that they found DNA evidence that doesn't exist. Um, computer forensics. There is probably more room where computer forensics could be a major improvement, uh, but often the the departments and the CSI teams are so so under trained or educated that they don't really know how to do proper a uh, proper investigation on computers. Um, so yeah, that that's that. There's room for improvement there. On the other hand, a lot of the computer stuff is really just a solution. So it, it's just some software. Do I really need to build this for thirty thousand? Because that'd be really expensive. Um, so, so, and this is true for a lot of CSI things, frankly, is they're just buying some piece of hardware or software. The hardware and software self accredits itself to say, oh, this is accurate. This will find things, and then there's really no telling no open sourcing of the code or anything or uh, understanding of what the software is actually doing or versus what the software is claiming to do um, and frankly the introduction of a lot of possible computer forensic research has made police kind of lazy and they don't want to just do the good old-fashioned uh, police work which would be the hard stuff questioning people uh, interviewing people uh, uh, searching crime scenes There's a lot of lazy police out there that just want to crack open somebody's iPhone and see what they can find and that's not just police that's also the NSA and every other three-letter agency of the US government and probably every other government 
Um, whereas witness testimony, while it's not very reliable, it's a lot more understandable to a jury and and probably a lot more accurate than than saying, oh, we found this on the phone and we think this on the phone means this. Which, that's really where a lot of it is going to boil down to, is if, if you are a mobster using a phone, you're going to talk in code. So if you send a text saying, I'd like a uh, hundred carrots, that might mean you're ordering a hundred, like, marijuana bags or something. Um, so then, then you have to say this this potentially innocuous tweet which very well may have actually been an innocuous tweet um, is actually this other thing and a surprising amount of I'm getting really court good cases catapults. are one around that concept of making making the jury believe something is something that it doesn't really seem like it is because they're talking in code or uh, and often that is the case but often it isn't too um, uh, you only have to look at some of the previous experiences in the school systems when you have a bad teacher or a bad cop on uh, on the school the grounds um, saying that a kid is a gangster because they're wearing a black t-shirt or a red t-shirt that that means they're a member of the bloods or the crypts or something like that or uh, like it really is that that ridiculous or, or the dare system where uh, they 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 called once all the kids who had joined Deer Dare one year and didn't re-up the next year, they called all their parents and said, we think they're on drugs. Uh, it's a very unfortunate and eye-opening thing when you start hearing some of the stories about just how abusive the power schools and the school officers can be. Uh, honestly, like, just the other day, uh, there was a story of a police officer arresting an eight-year-old for throwing a tantrum in the first grade. And not not just, like, putting her in handcuffs or anything, like, full-on taking her to, to juvie, uh, processing her. It's just, like, ridiculous. Uh, and honestly, I don't think police should be on the school grounds at all. I think there should be also a con severe consideration of limiting the powers and checking the powers more than anything of the principals and uh, teachers who often act like they are some form of dictator. Uh, and I got on the rant here. Uh, Uh, that that was a long rant to to really just say yeah, cops really aren't your friend. And on a Lego game where cops are being purified, it, it it needs to be said though. Like the the best way to interact with police is hope you never interact with police in your entire life. Like even if you think you're you're one of the few that will always have good experiences with them and that you can. Um, you can walk up to him and say, "Hi, officer. Thank you for your service." Like you own, you still run a risk. Uh, you still run a risk of running into the, to the one guy who is, who is going to act insane at that moment and end up getting arrested or shot. Uh, uh, and that that really is just a problem of. The hiring policies in the United States as far as the police um, civil service jobs like this you probably would be better off drafting people Another instead catapult. of allowing awesome. them to apply 
Because people who want to power, power the power of the police are, are highly susceptible to also be the same people that want to abuse that power. That was kind of funny. We really haven't seen that in Lego games before, where you miss your mark because the the I, danger I there. To get to the back of the roof so I can see where that helicopter is, landed. You you kind of know it's a, a gag, but I could also see some kids thinking, "Oh, they screwed up and they need to go back and try again." On. The other hand, I am definitely not opposed to heroic tales. Uh, let's face it, the stories of like the Odyssey and Iliad and the o eh, and and um, other things like that, uh, Greek tales of heroes. Like th those characters really aren't heroes as they're described, but they're perceived and they are glorified as heroes. Um, in the United States, we glorify our the founding fathers uh, of our of the Constitution and such, but they they really aren't. And when you actually do the research, they're they're at best human be beings with with a vested interest in not paying taxes. Uh, it the founding of the Constitution really is the founding of a long history of crony capitalism. Uh, and a desire to that's Rex Vinny is uh, working for him I'll never get over there what are they saying a, a desire to to not have any kind of regulation don't get me wrong I, I don't think the the uh, declaring independence for the United States was a bad idea but it is reasonable to realize uh, that they definitely did not want to pay taxes on their moonshining business. And, uh, it would have been kind of ironic had the no taxation w without representation. And I am now on my second rant, which goes to show this whole sequence has been pretty boring. Uh, it would have been funny if the UK had really taken him up on that offer and said, okay, fine, we'll give you some representatives. Um, mm -hmm. Another job! We had a deal! Probably still would have declared independence. I got to get you all them vehicles. I got you that T-Rex. I got you the Bell Pepper Emerald. And that boat! Do you know how much trouble I had someone else go through for that? Well, I've hmm. still got more stuff on my shopping list, Vinny. And you are gonna get it for me. I ain't even been paid for the other stuff yet. I have overheads, you know, and them paintings you gave me ain't any good. What do you mean? They're Picassos. Really? They look more like faces. Ah, just get the stuff, Vinny, or I'll have to replace you. Hmm. It's, it's kind of funny that Rex he's not makes Appalachian in his jobs. We take uh, all the risks, vocal. but he treats us like monkeys and gives us, uh... Peanuts? Chase, what did you hear? Nothing. Hmm. Except you mentioned Rex Fury. Yeah, what does it matter? So yeah, Rex Fury the private buyer I've is a bad for, guy still. He's just pushed me too far. Nobody gets away with treating the papalados like this. We're gonna do a job just for us. What you got in mind? The mm -hmm. biggest cheese in Lego City. The Von Stuffenberg Cheddar Truckle? Not that kind of cheese. Mm -hmm. I mean Forrest Blackwell, property magnet, fridge magnet, and king of this city. Forrest Blackwell? I'll tell Mo to take the fire boat and meet you. Get moving. Okay, Vinny. I can't blow my cover yet. Not until I've arrested Rex. So we're gonna kidnap Forrest Blackwell when the Chinese slash Japanese gang was was driving and limoing him around, whether or not he realized they were. All right. Well, now I'm way down here. Doesn't seem like there's a place. There's a way to get back up here. Okay, there is. 
Um, so, if this is supposed to be a cartoon, having several different bad guys kind of makes sense. A, a Carmen San Diego rogues gallery uh, type concept. Let's see, can I find a vending machine anywhere around here? That that's the question. The dynamite vending machines. Do they even show up on the scanner? I don't think they do. Hmm. So yeah, it does make sense that you would want different characters. And I can understand making them a little stereotypical. Although, in all honesty, if anybody actually owns the rights to Carmen San Diego and was doing more than allowing a Netflix series to be created off of that license, um, they would have a hard time releasing a game with those characters that were in like the original Carmen San Diego games. It, it, there would be outcries of, of downright racism. Um, But, I mean, you can have a little bit of that. You can have a guy who is Italian, you just don't turn him into My Cousin Vinny. You can have a, a guy like Rex, who's, who's, I guess, a bit Appalachian muscle man type bad guy. But you don't have him shirtless with a scar across his chest and a ton of hair uh, all around his chest. Sorry, it's an emergency. Hmm. Hmm. I don't think we'll probably ever get like a 3D viewer to look at these vehicles and unlike Lego Star Wars uh, the complete saga that was a big thing that they did and then they kind of abandoned uh, it used to be that you would see the pieces put together and you could actually disassemble it and get the, get an idea of how to build something in this case you could kind of look around the edges and get a decent thought as far as how to build things, but you, you don't really get a parts list, which would be hard for kids, and you're really not getting any instructions at all. Um, how many pieces do I have? Yeah, I really don't have enough to build a 10,000 brick stunt ramp for no reason. Um... The story again is just having us go all over the place. It, it's rather ridiculous. And can I really just start the story uh, here? Or if I start the story, do I have time? I guess is the better thing. The fact that there's hidden vehicle races. Does that mean this will stay on the map going forward? Or if I get far enough away from it, does it disappear again? Does that mean I'm going to have to run around the entirety of the world and just walk next to every vehicle? Um, if that's the case, we might have the first instance here of a LEGO game that's not even worth 100%ing if, if there is a considerable amount of of ridiculous actions or walking uh, if there's no detector we still have plenty of red bricks though so I assume we would have plenty of that what's weird about this camera mode is the like you you would have to wait until everything fades out then press F12 on Steam to see it. Otherwise, you are just going to get a screenshot of the interface, uh, which I don't think many people would want. Yeah. I guess we could hit Y, and this would narrow some things down. Uh, it would tell you like how many things in a specific area are left to do. And it seems like there's about one of everything. And there is a train shortcut somehow in this area. Which doesn't make any sense. 
Maybe that's why this train just ends here, is that there's some kind of... Yeah, it says there's a train shortcut here. And it says there's a train shortcut here. And this entire area is apparently Paradise Sands. Um, no, that's where we're going. This is Paradise Sands. And this is Fresco. And this is King's Court. And this is downtown. Alright. It's over here. Yeah, it seems... Seems like there's about one of everything in every area. And there are two more things that we haven't even unlocked yet. Uh, so maybe that is an indication that we have two more levels to go. Uh, main story levels, that would kind of make sense. I think I've said before that by the time you're done with your first playthrough of the levels, you're about 25% of the way uh, complete. And if we're at 19.2% right now, that would be in line. Uh, we're not really getting the things I'd like to have. Changing ringtone is not important, whereas data scan upgrades would be very important, and uh, score multipliers would be a little important. Costumes, definitely not important. And I have no idea what the extra with 100% unlocked would be. Uh, Otherwise, we have 10 of 39 red bricks, and this has been a ranty one, certainly. With just, again, evidence that the game is getting even more and more dull. Uh, worse than any of the other LEGO games, simply because I just don't care about the story. Because it's a new handwritten story, instead of leaning on the fact that all the other LEGO games, uh, as far as I know, have were leaning on Star Wars or Indiana Jones or Harry Potter even Lego Marvel Super Heroes was leaning on a generic Marvel storyline that that they didn't really have to do too much to 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 write around um, so it's totally believable that TT Games as a corporation uh, just doesn't have any writers uh, one might even argue that WB Games in general doesn't have that. The Batman Arkham City stories are interesting in small sequences, but I think, generically speaking, it's kind of the same thing over and over again. It's the Joker gets away, the Scarecrow gets away, and you have to hunt him down, and in individual incidences, you're just running into random bad guys and beating them up. Uh, yeah, we didn't make any progress as far as vehicles or people worth mentioning and we have five more gold bricks um, I wonder if maybe this will be the last we see of honey also uh, they they may just leave him lying in the pool for the rest of the game and then maybe he'll show up at the very last second um, the obvious gag would be that honey somehow gets all of the credit for capturing Rex uh, this time and gets promoted and Chase again gets left looking like the bad guy although like I still don't really know the backstory why he left the first time and I don't really know why he came back also don't know why he seemed to be missing all of his skills when he came back uh, anyways we're just going to end early. That's it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below in the description box. And if you want to support me even further, there's a link to Patreon. Or you can friend me on Steam and gift me a game off my wishlist. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.